Ja, welcome to the show. All right. Well, I mean, <laughs> welcome to the show too. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. I appreciate Thank it. For first, time, <laughs> first time one of my guests has welcomed me to the show. I know. <laughs> we should welcome each other. That should be the standard intro for every podcast. Welcome. Absolutely welcome. should. Okay. We are going to revolutionize podcasting right I know. here right now. <laughs> All right. So, Ja, you embarked upon this journey a few years ago of 100 days of rejection. Why? Um, almost like a title of your podcast, because I, I figured out I was afraid of rejection, you know, and after, um, got investment, uh, I failed to get the investment from my startup. I just started, my first thought is, man, I'm not good at this. You know, I, I, I should quit. Uh, the person who is, um, uh, the potential investor, he knew so much more than I did. If he didn't like my company, that must means, you know, I'm not up to, I'm, I'm not up to it. Um, so then I just figured out, I'm like, Hmm, that's not a good thought. Right. With like just one rejection, like, would I want to quit? I grew, I grew up idoling Bill Gates, you know, I grew up in China. I wanted to be the Chinese version of Bill Gates. It took me like a long, like 20 years to actually have the guts to, to step out and, and do something like be the entrepreneur. So just looking back, I'm like, why do I want to quit right now? Why did I start earlier? And just all those years, I just figured out, man, I'm afraid of rejection. That's why I did this project, trying to do something. You know, people told me, if, I mean, I learned this thing called rejection therapy. It's like, if you are afraid of rejection, instead of running away from it, why don't you go look for it? If you do it for 30 days, by the end, you will desensitize yourself from the pain. You, you become this like a badass, you know, that's my goal to, uh, I mean, that's why I started this project. So what was it like? So you, you say, okay, I'm going to, I'm going to go out for a hundred straight days and get rejected. Mm -hmm. Tell us about, tell us about like day one. What was that like? Yeah. Day one was the scariest of them all. So day one, my goal is, and by the way, I, I you know, I, I, I mean, I delayed it for a few days. I'm like, yeah, I'm going to do this. Ah, maybe tomorrow. And this is terrifying. One day I'm like, I got to do this. <laughs> if I don't do this, I'm, I'm not going to start. So I used to live in Texas at the time. Um, and, uh, Austin, Texas. And just one day before going home, I was like, I got to do this. What do I do? Then I saw a guy sitting in the lobby of the building I was working at, uh, of, of, of where, where my office is. So I'm like, all right, I'm going to ask that guy to get a hundred dollars for a hundred dollars. So I just walked toward that guy. You know, I started out like just full of swagger. I'm like, yeah, I can do this. Yeah. Yeah. I can do this. And then I was just walking toward him and then halfway through, I just started sweating. Uh, and my heart was pounding. I was a mess when I got there. So I just asked him, can I get a hundred dollars from you? And he said, no. And he asked me why. I just ran as fast as I could. I'm like, okay, no, thank you. I just ran as fast as I could. So that was my first day. The th funny thing about that episode is, you know, I was having all kind of horrible thoughts in my mind approaching him. I'm like, this is a, uh, he's going to cuss me out. He's going to laugh at me. He's going to call the police. He's going to pepper spray me. Maybe I just have all these terrible thoughts. But when I got there, he said no. And he asked me why. And he didn't, he wasn't like a menacing figure or anything, but I just ran because I was so afraid. So the night of that episode, I was like, huh, you know, and I have to upload that video because I was doing, like I said, I'm going to do this. I'm going to do a video blog. I'll put this on YouTube. So the world will hold me accountable. So that night I was looking at the video. I'm like, wait, that didn't happen. Like he wasn't like really rude, but I thought all the bad things. So I anticipated the worst. And almost as if it doesn't matter what happened in reality, as long as it's a rejection, it's almost like the worst happened. So I'm like, okay, I learned something important. The word, what you're experiencing in reality and what you're experiencing in your mind might be very different. There's a great quote by Mark Twain. He says, I'm an old man and I've known a great many troubles, many of which never actually happened. Yes. <laughs> we make these things up in our head, these fears that, about rejection, about failure that, that never actually come to fruition. And you were experiencing that. And, and I think we all experienced that. Yeah. Joe, what were some of your other attempts at rejection or the rejections that you got? Any, was any, any ones that were particularly funny or particularly scary that uh, really stick out for you? Yeah, they're all pretty funny. Like, in, like speaking of, re like I got 
later on, I got a bunch of yeses, you know, and we're we gonna talk about them later. But let's talk about the rejections first. And and the the rejections, I I try to have fun with this. You know, I try to be like, you know, hey, reje this rejection is so heavy, such a heavy subject. You know, if I'm not having fun, I, I probably quit pretty easily. Uh, so so I came in, I said, okay, what can I? How about we just try to have you know have some fun? And I, so. Like for example, one day after getting a burger, uh, you know, after getting a burger for lunch, I asked for a burger refill. Uh, another day, uh, I had a, a burger a, refill. He actually uh, asked the man for a I, burger it, refill. What was yeah. his response? Um, he was like, "We don't give out burger refill, man." Uh, <laughs> and then I just started negotiating with him. I'm like, "Hey, this your burger is good. If I can get a burger refill, I'll I'll come back here for the next week. I'll, I'll tell more people about it. It's like a." It's great marketing. What are most marketing for a free burger, right? He was like, "Yeah, sure." I said, no, sorry, I can't do it. You know, I could get in trouble with my manager. You so know? you're learning. You're learning at this point to that it's, that it's okay to continue to to ask, not to just turn and run whenever you get the yes. first rejection. You're learning to to have a conversation. Exactly. That was day two. You know, with the burger refill, and I learned so much. Like sometimes you're. You have all these fears built up, and the more you build, the fear you build up, the, the you know the less likely you are taking the first step. But once you take that first step, you know you were like, "Wow, I didn't die!" You know the first day I thought I was gonna die. I didn't die. I didn't lose an arm, uh, and 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 I learned that if I don't run after rejection, I can have still have rooms to you know to maneuver to negotiate. That's why on day two I started I asked for a burger refill, but this time I didn't run, and I and I started doing all kind of things like I was. Uh, you know, one day I went to uh, PetSmart and asked them to cut my hair, uh, like I was a <laughs> dog. And uh, um, what, one day I, I went to the uh, uh, another day is during Thanksgiving. Uh, people lining up in front of Best Buy, right? I just went to the front of the line and say, "Hey, can I cut in front of you? <laughs> can can I take your spot?" So I just did all kind of th uh, things that I thought was funny, and uh, it was a lot of fun. And so, so what did you learn from all of these rejections? First of all, I mean, as I mentioned, it's not as bad as I thought. You know, it's never as bad as as, as I thought. And and secondly, I just got better. I'm like, wow, okay, I I, I got better quite by quite a bit, but just by doing this. Um, once you lose the fear, once you try to have some fun, um, and you can experiment with stuff, right? You can just like instead of saying you get shot on the first ask, you're like. Okay, I got rejected. How about I try to make you know some counter request? How about if I try to negotiate a little bit? How about if I ask why? You know, I got rejected. How about I give them my why I'm doing this? So when I started experimenting all these stuff, like miracles started to happen. Like I got, I came in wanting to get rejected, but not only I didn't, I was getting yeses left and right. Tell us about some of those yeses. So uh, the 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 uh, uh, one day I was able to uh, play soccer in someone's backyard. You know, I just knock on the door and I said, "Can I play soccer in your backyard?" So he opened. It was like sure thing. So uh, yeah, I had play soccer in someone's backyard. Um, and uh, there and there's another day I I went to uh, when I you know so so before I flew I asked the flight attendant, "Can I give the safety announcement instead of you?" You know, uh, <laughs> I'm. The, the customers, the passengers will listen to me more than you. Or, you know, it's more interesting. And so he was like, "Yeah, I can't, can't do that by law because you have to be seated." But come over and get, I give I give him my mic and say whatever you want to the passengers. I'm like, "Wow, this is like open mic now. This is even harder. I don't know what to say." <laughs> so I had to perform like stand up in front of uh, people on a plane. Um, yeah, and the most famous one, of course, is the one that's like I'm gonna do a Krispy Kreme donut shop. I asked the donut makers to make me, you know, uh, donuts like that, you know, that look like Olympic rings. You know, you, you link five donuts together and make them look like rings. And no way they're going to do that. So I thought I'm going to come in, got rejected. Don't run. Um, joke a little bit. Then I leave. Then leave. And guess what? The donut maker took me so seriously. And, and you know, she was like, huh, what does it look like? How can I do this? And half an hour later, she came up with a box of donuts that look like Olympic rings. And uh, I was just floored. It, that that was a moment really uh, changed my life. I can say, um, it just opened up so much possibilities. It made me think, you know, how many do you know? There's, I thought there's no way she was gonna say yes. Just how many donuts moments have I missed in my life just because I thought no way I was I was gonna get the yes. There's a lot of talk about resilience these days. When you're doing a 100 days of rejection, was there built in? 
resilience in in that you were just getting stronger or was there a need to to rebuild yourself and, and to be resilient? I mean, what, what's your take on the need for resilience? I think anyone can be more resilient. There's just always this nature versus nurture kind of a debate, right? Are you born with it or can you get better? Um, I, I definitely think there's some some both. Like I have two kids now. And I can see in terms of resilience, they're very different. You know, they're under the same parents, and but they're just very different. But that doesn't mean it determines their life. Their life. It doesn't mean they are who they are. Like always, you can train them, uh, and they can. You can train yourself. So you know, but by, by the way, I see. You know, you're a coach. You know this. Like you know, to get better, you have to just go exercise and work out right so for me resilience is a you can work out you can um keep working at um the thing that you're afraid of or the thing that's beating you up you can go to it and find a low more lower risk environment where you train so um to build up your resistance build up your resilience so when it matters like when you're looking for a job or you're making a startup pitch uh, or whatnot, uh, then, or maybe even asking someone out, then you can have that resilience that's built in and you have, have all those muscles and experiences and then you, and like mental muscles that, that that's already built in. So do you recommend people do their own version? Maybe not a hundred days, but do you recommend people actually go out and seek rejection? I I do, I do. Uh, maybe not during an, a, a, you know, like a pandemic, uh, you know, you just go on the street and I mean, just do your, you know, everyday lives. You know, when you're making requests, don't just, first of all, don't, don't reject yourself. Like that's, that's the, we're, we're our worst rejector. You know, we often, <clears throat> um, before other people could reject us, we're like, you know, ah, no way that's going to happen. No way I can do that. So you just say no to yourself and that's the end of that. We're our worst rejector. Um, but first of all, so don't don't reject yourself and try it out. You know, just um, big, big request, small request, ask, you know, and then if you get rejected um, and don't just run and then try to stay engaged and have a smile and have some fun with it. You know, those are really good, you know, envir like environments for you to try. For example, if you go to a coffee shop, ask for coffee, right? Uh, maybe you can ask for like, a, can I get a, a like a ten percent good guy discount? You know, I do that all the time. You know, <laughs> I, I, sometimes I get a yes, sometimes I get a no. But the thing about doing that is, you know, you have a smile on your face. That you don't have to make the other person uncomfortable, but just make the request and make a joke of it. You know, and but if it happens, it doesn't matter. If you get a yes or no on that, but you step out of your comfort zone, right? So, as you know, if you're working out. You know whether you're training physically or mentally the only way to do it is for you to get uncomfortable so it's the same thing with that when it comes to resilience and rejection training is you got to get a little bit uncomfortable but not too uncomfortable but, but when you push that comfort zone um and, and then your comfort zone will, will expand accordingly talk about the the six-year-old within all of us yeah that we have to conquer mm -hmm. Why, you know, and you have kids now and you're seeing this and mm -hmm. why is it that we as fully capable adults logically knowing that, you know, when we, when we ask for something, whether it's investment in our company or, or anything else, or, 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 you know, a 10% good guy discount, right? Mm -hmm. You know, opposite ends of the spectrum. Why is it that we have a fear and why do we have to battle that six-year-old, that inner six-year-old? who is afraid that we're going to get, you know, we're going to get shot because we asked for a 10% good guy discount, or we're just going to feel that the humiliation when we know, like, logically, we're not really going to have to deal with that, with, with that, but we're constantly battling that, that kid inside. Yeah. It's, it's in our DNA. It's in our DNA. It was just, as I grew older, it got kind of uh, manifested, you know, I mean, long, long time ago when, when um, our ancestors, when they were, working in the environment, not like today, they were like hunters and gatherers and, uh, and, and it, they, they weren't working by themselves. You know, they weren't like cowboys just, you know, <laughs> working by themselves. They we were pretty smart, um, but we weren't the fastest. We weren't like, we weren't the strongest, but we're at the top of the, the food chain, right? That the reason is we are, we collaborate better than anyone else, you know? And so that's why we can get together and hunt and, uh, and build. 
But if you are rejected from a group, if you're just by yourself, that literally means life and death. You're like very quickly, if you're by yourself, the hunted becomes the hunter and you're the hunted now. So there's this, that innate needs or probably a little bit of a, you know, like a, um, I wouldn't call that evolution or not, but the people who get together, like who can uh, work with each other, usually survive, right? That the people who are just like very aloof, they don't. And so that's why, like, there's a little bit of a, uh, you know, um, you know, genetic engineering by nature in, in a way that we are learned to be collaborative. Uh, we, we learn to be afraid of rejection, you know, because that's a signal that people don't like you, you might be alone and like, you might be in danger. So that type of, um, I guess, DNA made us to be so, to be so sensitive and so afraid of rejection. But you know what? Nowadays, we don't work, we don't hunt like that anymore. You know, we don't, our economy, our world is about innovation. It's about, you know, thinking outside of the box. It's about, you know, doing things that other afraid, I mean, other people are afraid. Um, and in fact, if you look at the people who are the most successful in the world, they're almost all like that. They, they have this kind of a innate resilience against toward rejection or toward failure. Um, and they sometimes it was born, sometimes it was built. So, but if we still let that fear of rejection dictate what we do, then it's going to be hard for us to be successful. And you've mentioned that people who change the world, I mean, they're met with significant rejection, often violent yeah. rejection in their careers, right? Exactly. I mean, if you look at the people who are, I mean, first, I mean, I'm, you know, I'm a business person. Now, I look at a lot of, lot of examples in business, like the new ideas when they came out like 10 years ago, let's say the Ubers, the, the Airbnbs you know, of the world, when they first came out, people were thinking like, That's, th these are the worst ideas in the world. You're out of your mind. Like what? You invite people into your house to, to pay you rent, to live short term? You can get murdered. What? I'm going to... Strangers, of course. I'm gonna turn my car into like a taxi, shovel and like then you know, just just shuttle strangers around. I, I might not last a day, right? You started like like the, some of the best investors in the world, like when they hear this idea, they're like, that's, "No, that's crazy, no way." So, the people who actually build those um, uh, services, those are very resilient people. If you look at them, you might, I mean, the stories you might or might not like them, but they're very resilient. Uh, and they're able to fight those rejections. And most people wouldn't be able to battle those. M most people be like, oh, that's good advice. I'm going to try something else, you know, and those, that's a bad idea. Like, we have good, you know, we'll have bad ideas. We'll try something else, right? But the people who actually are able to run through a wall, even uh, even in, in the face of rejection, those are the people who actually survived and made it happen. So I'm talking about business here, right? But if you're talking about like even, let's talk about something even bigger, talk about society, history. If you look at the people who made the biggest impact in, in the world, you know, like some of my idols, like, you know, Lincoln or, uh, you, know, you know, Mahatma Gandhi. And uh, I look at, um, you know, maybe Nelson Mandela, right? Uh, you know, and um, Martin Luther King Jr. When they had huge goals. And when they had those goals, they were rejected often violently and sometimes even gruesomely. Um, and, but they didn't let people's rejection, you know, of, dictate what they were going to do. They let the, their re reaction toward their rejection, you know, define themselves. So that's what I say, you know, if you, the bigger impact you're trying to make, whether you're talking about startups or you're talking about like trying to change the world, the more rejections you're going to face, you're just going to have to, you know, and I mean, you're going to have to use the flip side of rejection. You have to ignore the rejection, but also find your tribe. That's really the most important thing. Um, when I have business ideas and, and the one thing I don't want is lukewarm acceptance or indifference, you know, that's not a good sign. What I want is people are like, oh man, this is the best idea I've ever heard. Or people can tell you this is the worst idea I've ever heard. I hate, I hate this idea. Um, you know, and the more emotions they have, the more like, oh, you got something. Because the, there's the polar opposite, right? There's what the people who hate it, the opposite of that, there are people who love it. You need to find your tribe and find the people who love it and build it for them and do it for them. Yeah, that, so that goes deeper than 
than just, you know, it's okay to get rejected. That goes to like who you are and what your purpose is. So does that help? Because when you, when you talk about the Gandhis of the world, the Martin Luther King juniors of the world who had these deep mission driven purposes in their lives, it's easy for us, you and I, and the listener to say, yeah, well, yeah, but they had that, right. They had this huge, you know, uh, change the world type of thing. I'm just, I'm just trying to get a promotion at work. I'm just trying to start that business or I'm just trying to get a publisher for my book or I'm just trying to, you know, ask that, that girl out on a date. Like, what about, what about us? What about the people who, and, and I, you know, I certainly maybe, and maybe the listener looks at me a little bit differently because I, you know, and, and you and I, Gia, because we, we have sort of these mission driven lives and, but what about folks who, who maybe don't necessarily have that? Is it important to, do you have to do the deep work to get there? Because otherwise rejection just sucks. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, think about the causes you're representing, right? You might not be like changing the world or you, know, you might not be like, you know, like in the civil rights or, you know, ending the apartheid or ending slavery. Maybe that's not your goal, but your goal it's important to you. You only have one life, right? If you're indifferent toward it, if you're trying to live everyone else's life, life will pass you by very quickly. You, it's, it's about it's about you, and there's nothing more important than you to you. So in, in cases like this, when you are talking about you know your career, ask someone out, or maybe a uh, you know like starting a company. Think about what if you don't do it what's your life is going to be right just because you're afraid or maybe you just give up very quickly what is going to be by the you know at the end you look back you're like well i could have tried it and i i, I didn't give it a try because i just kind of rationalized myself out of it just because i was so afraid how much regret are you going to have the world is going to end for all of us one day when that you know when the light you know, shuts off nothing matters anymore to all, to any of us right so what matters is the now, is our lives. So if you have a goal, if you have a like a like a mission, or just have like I want to live a good life, I want to have a life where I don't have regret, then that's more important. That's as to you. That's as important as any of the big goals I was talking about. Yeah, I mean the la- la- I mean last I checked, the the human death rate is still one hundred percent. So, yeah. uh, you know act now. Don't, don't sit on your hands and, and think, well, maybe someday. And, and I'll add this to what you said, Ja, is we have, you know, you may not be trying to end apartheid or slavery or something like that, but, but you're, you're talking about having an impact on, in, in your world, right? Whatever that, whatever that is, right? Maybe it's uh, some philanthropy or, or, or some charitable cause that you want to support uh, where you're volunteering for them, or, or maybe it's, you know, you want to get the promotion so you can take care of your family more. Like that is an impact that is worth getting rejected for. That is worth building up your resilience, building up your strength, understanding that I'm not going to, you know, lose an arm because I asked for the promotion or because I stepped up and, and, and said, yes, I will, speak in front of the the group even though i'm terrified of speaking like i will i'm willing to do that because it's there's there's people that i'm going to impact in my world not the entire you know globe or country but like in my world and we all have influence absolutely absolutely like i'm going through the same thing myself i'm starting a new blog after all those years of writing and i I start writing a new blog right now and there's part of me there's fear i'm like what if I write this thing no one reads? What if people laugh at it? What if just, you know, people think, who are you? Like, I write about investing now, like, you know, personal finance. Or like, people, I'm just like, people will think, who are you writing about this? There is that fear in my mind, right? But I I, uh, I recently I, I heard this, uh, um, this interview by uh, Jim Collins, you know, who wrote the book, uh, Good to Great. Uh, and he talked about one concept that I found this very interesting. He talked about, hey, what if, you know, what if you only have 10 years to live? And he always lived like that. He lives as if he has 10 years to live, um, which is interesting. It's not like, what if you only have six months to live or if you have one day to live, right? But one day to live, trust me, I'm not going to do a thing. I'll spend all the time eating barbecue with my family. 
right? <laughs> and, but if you have a six month, I got to talk about all the, fi- all the finance and, you know, worry about all those. But so 10 years are long enough. It's a period of long, long enough period where you can actually start in some in-depth project that will make a lot of impact. But it's not long enough where you're just like, yeah, I'm going to wait for another five years for this. And so, uh, and that kind of a framework kind of does make an you know, impact in your world. Because guess what? We might really just have 10 years to live. Who knows? You know, we, we never know what tomorrow brings. You, you got to work on your, your dreams and work on your goals. Otherwise, at the end of 10 years, you're like, you know, I could have tried that. But I instead of you pursue your own dream, you try to live up an expectation of someone else. And that's what I say, you know, um, you have to go after it. No one's going to come give you permission. Nope. Nope. You got to just go get it. You mentioned finding your tribe. Is that important? I, I, I look back on my life as a wrestler and I know that failure was easier for me as an athlete because I had other like-minded people around me and and failure was just a normal part of what we had to do as our quote unquote job. Uh, it hurt physically and emotionally, um, but there was this tribe around us. Is, is that an important part of being strong and facing rejection? It absolutely is. Absolutely is. Um, so I think finding your tribe is important in anything. You know, we have a lot of mental tribes, goal tribes. If, if you're developing a product, it's important to know who you're developing for. You're making your, your things for, you're not making it for everyone. You're making it for a specific audience. And your goal is to find that audience and, and, and relentlessly focus on developing things for that audience. And once you serve them well, then maybe you can expand. When it comes to trying to overcome your mental, um, you know, trying to become more resilient uh, or you try anything new, you need to find the people who are just like that. Um, I did it. You know, I did, I did 100 days of rejection because... I went to an entrepreneur, uh, entrepreneurship forum uh, at the time, you know, but they're like, that was before Reddit. Uh, on the forum where people talking about entrepreneurships uh, and, and I was getting in, I'm like, what, what, how do I become stronger? And people start lamenting all kinds of things. And one day, like one, one person mentioned, hey, there's thing called rejection therapy. It's like a, a card game for you to just go out and do things, like uh, give you suggestions to get rejected. And uh, there are people out there saying, ah, maybe I should try this. Maybe it's time to start an experiment. That's the exact word I see. I'm like, guess what? I'm going to start an experiment. This sounds good. It sounds like a good idea, something I'm going to do. And I did it. It wasn't my idea. I just took it and, and did it and rolled with it. And guess what? You know, it, I made really a career out of this uh, and then built my own tribe of people. First of all, I found my tribe. And I and then later on I build my own tribe. So it is important to think tribally. Joe, what would you recommend for the listener who has bought into this and says, "Okay, now what?" Right? What is an action item? Something they can do in the next twenty-four to forty-eight hours to start building the rejection muscle. To get started, go out and and ask for something that you're not comfortable with, that you're that you want. It's not like, don't ask for something you don't want because you, you're not attached to it, right? But ask for something you want. What is that thing that, that, that you want? Maybe you want to talk to someone you admire, right? You're like, oh, that's a, you know, maybe, maybe the gym. Maybe that's, a, maybe that's like some author you, are, you admire. You're like, I want to talk to that person. And, you know, or just, I just want to say hi. Reach out, you know, send a LinkedIn mail or you know, and, and, and ask for, you know, something that you wanted. Maybe you wanted to uh, be engaged with a uh, type of service, you know, you know go call, call them, ask for a discount. Just ask and see what happens and take that step. And it doesn't matter if you get rejected or not. What's important is you taking that step, right? If you don't know how, you know, feel free to buy my book. It's on Amazon. It's called Rejection Proof. But, you know, more important than that is you writing your own story taking that step and uh, do something that you're afraid of. Tell the listeners where they can find you, follow you, buy your book, you know, l- learn about your new blog, etc. Yeah, you can go to rejectiontherapy.com. So the story behind it is someone else, like I, I learned about rejection therapy and, and uh, I did the 100 days of rejection. It became so big, I bought the, the whole business from the original owner. So now I own rejection therapy, you know. So go to rejectiontherapy.com. 
you can buy my book called Rejection Proof. Uh, and also, if you're interested in personal finance, if you're interested in uh, investing, like investing, like how to uh, qualitative investing, not the number, code number thing, but using your emotions and your love to uh, for products and services as a way to guide you to, inv to invest, to have harmony of what you, your personal life, your your consumption, your personal life with your money. That's my goal. And uh, you can go to my website at rejectiontherapy.com. You can see the 100 Days of Rejection blog. Also, you can see the, uh, the investing blog called Love Investor. Uh, Love Investor. So, uh, yeah, it's a lot of fun. Excellent. Now, for the listener, of course, we'll have all those links. And uh, in the action plan, go to jimharshawjr.com slash action. As always, to get all the links, all the quotes, all the notes, all the highlights from this episode, or go straight to rejectiontherapy.com. Ja, thank you so much for making time to come on the show. Thank you for having me. If you like this video, hit the like button below. But also, what was helpful? What wasn't helpful? What questions do you have? I'll reply to every comment below. And if you actually want to get all of the notes, all of the quotes, all of the links, all of the action items from this entire episode, go to jimharshawjr.com slash action and you can download the free PDF action plan. It'll give you all the notes, quotes, links, everything from the entire episode. You'll also get access to all of the action plans from all of my episodes of the Success Through Failure podcast. And if you want to learn how you can actually apply this learning to your life, figure out how you can start getting results now, you can actually sign up for a free one-time coaching call with me. Just go to jimharshawjr.com slash apply. That's jimharshawjr.com slash apply. It's a very quick, short application process. Find a time on my calendar, fill out the questionnaire, and you and I will have a conversation about how you can start getting results in your life by applying what you've learned. I look forward to talking to you.